Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Mike Palmier and we are going to talk about top dressing on canola for this canola school. So welcome Mike, it's great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me Amber. So we're going to be talking about top dressing, which isn't a very common thing, but we're in Saskatchewan right now and we've had some interesting years. Yeah, I mean the we're we're at a point where um, we've had received more rainfall than we did all of last year, and in some cases almost double what we've received all last year. So the crop potential is looking good, and so you know it's uh, to go out there and you know assess what your potential is, make sure that your weeds are taken care of, and understand what your subsoil moisture is, and make a decision. Okay, and what would be what would be the environmental conditions that have led up to even the possibility of top dressing for this year? Well, I, I talked a little bit about that on, uh, you know, just before about understanding what your subsoil moisture is. So going into this spring, we're actually quite dry. We've had three dry years in a row. Uh, we had less uh, snowfall over the winter than what we've had, a little bit more runoff because more frozen soils. Um, and so uh, we weren't really thinking about a top dress application. That was more pie in the sky is the idea there. Um, but with the amount of uh, moisture and precipitation that we've received since, uh, now we realize and we do a lot of work with uh, soil moisture probes uh, in the soil to understand how much moisture is there and what that means for the potential of the crop. And we realize that a lot of our area in west central Saskatchewan, uh, we have a full soil moisture profile down to a meter, if not very you know, close to being full. And so we do have the potential to have really excellent crops. So it's to get an idea on what is going to come down the pipe for, moist, uh, for um, the weather, which we never really know for sure. Uh, right now, the one thing that's a huge benefit for us is uh, we've had very mild temperatures. And the long-term forecasts are saying uh, slightly below average temperatures. And so that is a huge win because we've been so warm the last few years. And that's really limited our rooting of our crops. Uh, so that and assuming that we have average moisture here on out, uh, there's definitely an opportunity to gain more yield than what we had targeted in our fertility planning through the winter time. Okay, so I know we're talking about top dressing, but in general, how would you recommend managing fertility coming out of a drought and into a year where there is more moisture? The first step is, is a soil test. I mean, it's very, very important to be able to uh, understand what you have for residual nutrients, especially nitrates in the soil. Um, so the soil test is the number one key. Uh, we do a lot of two-depth soil sampling because uh, through the winter months and the, uh, the, the snowfall and, and moving that moisture through the profile, we're a lot of those nitrates have moved deeper into the soil. So if you're doing a, a zero to six or a zero to eight uh, sample, you're missing a lot of them. As well, we've had three consecutive years of uh, drought and poor growing conditions. So again, a lot of those unused nitrates are really starting to move lower in the profile. So to really understand what your full uh, profile, nutrient profile is because your roots on an actively growing and healthy crop are going to reach that and pull. Um, and I think part of what we do as agronomists is psychological with our customers. Uh, because I, I feel like after the last three years, you know, there's a lot of talk about, okay, I need to be able to manage my nutrition a little bit better, scale back on my uh, yield targets in my fertility planning, apply less nutrients, more top dress potentially, but we have to be careful with that because we have a very narrow window to top dress and make a decision. Mm -hmm. And so our strategy is to make sure that we have a very healthy yield target to start off with and that we top dress more for like exceptional conditions where we have really good conditions and we want to chase them. Because uh, I've seen lots of instances where uh, guys are relying too much on the top dress. It doesn't get done at the proper time or done at all. Um, and you need moisture to be able to move it down to the root zone. And there's a lot of potential revenue lost with that. Right. And what would be that proper time for top dressing in canola? Well, uh, the, mainly the proper timing is uh, any time really by emergence to pre-cabbaging. Issue with cabbaging isn't anything, you know, it's not that the plant can't uptake the nitrogen from the soil at that stage. It's, it's more of a leaf burn situation. 
right? Because we want to use uh, a you know specific nozzles for top dress, like a streamer. Most of them are three or five uh, stream nozzles. There's also like a, a Needham um, uh, top dress bar, a chafer bar they call that. Those are all important. And so the reason why to use those special nozzles and those streamer nozzles is because we want to have a stream of product and if it hits a plant, it crosses that plant quickly because what it hits as far as plant biomass, it will injure. Oh, and okay. so that's really important to do that. And as well, when you're looking at that top dressing application then, is to be able to uh, make sure that your boom height is at a, uh, as consistent as possible and you're not getting those streams crossing by having your booms too high either. So there's some number of things with that. Right. But the plant will utilize that nitrogen all the way through its growing cycle. Oh, great. So you've gone out and you've put top dressing on your crop. What is the potential difference you could see using that method? Well, if we know that we don't have the fertility there to support what the potential crop is, I mean, the potential is immense, right? Right. Um, so again, it's to understand what you have in the soil for moisture, make sure you have things taken care of. Obviously we cannot, you know, we can only do so much as far as rectifying any uh, issues that we have with you know, phosphorus and potassium and those types of immobile nutrients. Um, make sure that you have a good base with all of those and hopefully you've already done that because it's, you know, starting to get a little bit late. Um, and, and really, you know, it's to make sure that you understand what your plant needs for nitrogen. Um, a lot of the uh, uptake and removal charts would say about 3.3 pounds of nitrogen uh, is needed to produce a bushel. Uh, some of the numbers that we've used are a little bit different than that. Um, but to be able to correlate that to, to understand. And so, you know, maybe if you're putting down 10 U.S. gallons of uh, UAN on the crop through your sprayer, it could equate to 10 bushels of canola yeah. if the conditions are there and everything else is taken care of, that that's what your potential is. Right. So you talked earlier about soil sampling. sampling. Would that soil sample be taken before you've <laughs> seeded or is that something that you'd want to do at this stage? Well, yeah, I... Definitely you want to do it before you seed and I ideally I mean we do a lot of soil sampling in the fall so that we can do proper planting through the winter time right. in the spring It's just a challenge to be able to react to what you're finding mm -hmm. So you could do a soil sample right before a top dress be able to react off of that It's just a timing and logistics issue to be able to make sure that you can turn that around There's also avenues as far as tissue testing to understand the amount of nitrogen that's in that soil that's in that tissue um, again, then you would want to look at maybe doing a new tissue and whole plant and it would just that turnaround time and logistics could be right, a challenge. Right, because it does take time to get those results back from the lab exactly. and then make those decisions. So. Yep, and there are more real-time digital tissue testers that are out there that uh, I think the industry is looking at. Uh, we're still, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done to just understand, you know, the response to that. So is there a timeline where top dressing will stop giving a boost to the yield or just stopping economical with how much time and money is going to be going into it? Right. So again, at the cabbaging stage, it'll still uptake and you would still get a response. It's just mm -hmm. more plant injury that I'm concerned with. Uh, and that would be the same as you go into flowering, right? Is we don't want, we want to be really careful not to burn any flowers off or hurt those reproductive stages. <clears throat> now there has been some work done in in Europe for sure where they've top dressed even a late flowering canola, like really late, and they've seen an increase in yield. But I haven't really seen that work done in Western Canada, and so. How short our life cycle is on our plants and our, our potentials are different and all that stuff. I'm not sure exactly what to make of that yet, okay. but they have seen increases in yield with top dressing, late flowering, even just slightly post flower. Oh, wow. um, after that, I would say that your chances of response are getting pretty slim. Okay, cool. Well, that's a lot of information. Is there anything else that you want to add? Anything else you want to <coughs> throw out to our growers? It's it's a system. Uh, every like when we're talking about um, top dressing nitrogen, I just wanted to reiterate that to have a balanced nutrition uh, package is important. Make sure your weeds are taken care of, uh, that you have the proper plant establishment in order to reach your full pet potential. All of those things are important, not just nitrogen in your top right. dress. I know, and we, we tend to focus on the nitrogen piece too yes, often, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's great information, and thank you very much for joining us. That was Mike Palmier on Real Agriculture. Mm -hmm.